right, guys, today we're going to take a look at something a little bit unusual, and that would be a bicycle lock that I actually like. This is a, a pretty cool lock. This is by a company called Nog, and they call it the Nog Strongman, and it truly is. And uh, they also really has a sense of humor, because when you look at their security rating on here, I mean, uh, level 10 is grandma's house, uh, 40, park it at your local pub, and this one is rated ghetto, so a 90. I, I have never seen a war zone one, but I can only imagine what that thing would look like. But anyway, this one's rated 90, so it's not quite Nog's highest security rating, but I, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with this thing for a variety of reasons. I'm also impressed with their attention to detail. Um, the lock itself, uh, very hefty. I paid $30 for this from a guy in San Diego off of eBay, and he charged me, he ripped me off, $18.14 for shipping, but bringing the total cost of $48. But I got to say, it's still worth it. I am not disappointed in the least in this lock. Very cool. It's very heavy, one, uh, two pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces, which is 1.16 kilograms. Pretty hefty. Uh, this looks like metal on this end, obviously, but there is a 13 millimeter hardened steel shackle going inside of this silicone. Attention to detail. The silicone is really nice because it's a press fit here, which keeps all of the moisture out from entering the top of the lock if it's hanging up like this. The only opening on this lock is right there, and it is a shuttered lock to prevent you prevent weather and contaminants from getting inside of that lock. Silicone, kind of odd, but when you think about it, if you're a bike messenger, uh, cars are all the time pushing you off the road. Silicone is nice and grippy, so if you want to you hold this and swing it at their fender, you're not going to lose your grip. Even if it's wet, I think you'd probably be fine. But I think the real intent of this, of course, is to give you 360 degrees of silicone protection so you don't mar the finish of your bike or dent the frame anyway. Pretty nice, pretty mushy. Press fit, ni very nice fit all the way around on this thing. Um, it is a disc detainer. Let's take a look at another nice touch. Um, I know it's only a couple of pennies but it's really cool that they give you this because a lot of bike pants don't have pockets so they give you a little wristband to keep your bike uh, key secured to your wrist you don't have to worry about it dropping out of your pocket or trying to hold on to it disc detainer you get three keys and the key card now obviously you're only going to carry one of these but it's a nine disc lock and if you look closely these discs are very thin so Positioning of the pick, if you can get a pick in here, is absolutely critical. Again, let's look at this key. When I measure this, I, I know everybody loves math, but let's go ahead and measure it. In order to get to the first uh, disc, which is the tensioner disc, I have to get in there. It's right around, I want to say around 17 millimeters. That's if the key goes all the way in. So remember 17. Let's try it now. So we're going to stick this dude in there, and you'll notice it protrudes almost exactly, and I measured this earlier, 3 uh, millimeters. So that means it's 14 millimeters from the face of this lock to the disc. So we're right about, and I'm, again, I'm trying to do this through the camera, the first disc is located right about where the end of that ruler is, really buried deeply up inside of this metal case. So you got to get down pretty deeply inside of there. Obviously, I tried to pick it. So let's take a look. There's your shutter lock, but it doesn't matter with tensioners. I'm going to take our favorite disc detainer lock, slide it in there, and it doesn't reach, obviously. It doesn't reach that tensioner. So I can't pick it unless you reach the tensioner. So I measured this guy. Grab my ruler here real quick. And he can only go in that far, and I'm going to go up to the actuator there, and you'll notice it is right around right around 10. So I'm about 4 millimeters short of reaching that first disc that would enable me to pick it. So I grabbed another one, and I sacrificed him, and I ground off as much as I could. The problem here is this little piece, the shaft has, is countersunk down inside of there. So if you cut it back too far, you're going to hit that hollow space and your tip's just going to break off. So I went back probably within one millimeter. I'm very, very close. And the most I can get, the most depth I can get out of this is about, looks to be about 12, perhaps a little more, but right around 12. So even this long one, while it inserts in there perfectly, it 
doesn't reach the tensioning disc, unfortunately. So I was not able to pick this. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't think anybody will, unless you come up with, you know, you custom design and custom make your own pick that gives you at least 14 or 15 millimeters from the tip of the actuator, you're just not going to be able to pick this guy. So I totally failed in that regards. All right, take a look at the key. Um, when we open this guy up, Pull that out of there. Now you notice we have a half moon, which leads me to believe we have ball bearings inside of there. So when I took a look at it, indeed, there are no ball bearings. Let me grab a light here and you can take a look. Instead, there's a steel rod that's rounded off that fits into that groove, uh, obviously, on both ends. Also on both ends, you notice there's a Phillips screw in the bottom. Now it's only accessible when the lock is uh, open and the, and the shackle is removed. But me being curious, I went ahead and tried to remove that. I took both of those screws out because I wanted to see what's inside of here. I couldn't get it open. I think what happened is they probably put some epoxy, during assembly, they squirted epoxy down inside of there, mashed it together, and then used the screws to hold it together while that stuff set out. Because I did everything I could trying to pull this off of here. No luck whatsoever. All right, it is, uh, it is open. I'm going to leave it open because I want to show you one more thing. Set that right there. By the way, really thick uh, instruction book, just unbelievable. To give them credit, there are six different languages in here, but 16 pages of English instructions. Guys, it's not really that difficult. All right, another nice touch. Um, it's this guy. This is the mount that comes with it. Very hard, cast plastic. Um, and the nice touch here is... You don't have to worry about losing any screws when you put your clamp on. You got this nice band. It is rubberized on the inside, but not on the out. So again, nice touch. Uh, it is interlocked. So you slide this in there you, over the bar of your bike. You can put it on your upright tube, your cross tube. Doesn't really matter. A nice huge band. Plenty of room for the largest of tubes. And that's too loose, but it doesn't matter because they throw this in. Again, a nice touch. Slide that dude in there and it just cranks them right on down. You can crank this on any of your body parts that you like, and that locking paw is not gonna fail. It's a metal uh, locking paw. Very neat. Um, then this hangs from your bike. Doesn't rattle around, doesn't slide, doesn't twist or anything because of the rubberized. It's also silicone right here. Nice touch, doesn't mar your bike. All right, how does it work? Well, when this is hanging from your upright bar, you take your lock, you slide them in there like that, You'll notice this cutout is the same shape as the silicone housing on the shackle. When this slides in there, oh, 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 my bad. I caught the camera cord, well, power cord when I was doing that. All right, slides in there, and then you lock it. You remove your key and put it on your wrist, and off you go. It doesn't rattle because it's a press fit inside of there with the silicone, both here and right here. It clicked in place. This thing is not going to fall off, not going to rattle or distract you as you go down a bumpy road. Very well, well thought out. One last thing I'd like to show you, and that is the shackle itself. I did I do this with my right hand. Shackle itself is 13 millimeter. I was curious as to whether or not it's hardened steel. I don't yet have a Rockwell hardness tester. Um, I'm trying to find one at a reasonable price, but I did test it in the traditional way, like a thief would, with a saw. I used a hacksaw. That's about 15 or 20 licks with a hacksaw. It did eventually make a very slight groove on there. So I believe eventually I could probably cut through this with a normal hacksaw. It would take me a while. I might take a couple of blades, but I could get through here. But guys, these aren't designed, despite <laughs> despite the rating, these aren't designed to be left alone for hours on end. This is a very short delay mechanism. So the most I think I could hope for on this would probably be about five minutes. So if you're doing, you're, like you're dropping into the pub or you're maybe picking up a prescription, grabbing a cup of coffee, probably going to give you plenty of delay. Anything longer than that, I wouldn't trust, not just this lock, I wouldn't trust any lock. Um, anyway, hardened steel, very cool lock. If you'd like to win this guy, easy to do. All you got to do, go to the home page right there. In the center of the page is a purple bar. Click it, 
And with a little bit of luck, this you'll be the lucky winner of this. This is one of the first things I haven't destroyed in a long time. And this is actually something I think you'll find a lot of use for. Great product at a, and I think it's a pretty fair price, especially if you get it from someone other than a guy in San Diego with the ripoff shipping charges. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.